Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about solubility rules. We are going to know how to apply solubility rules or solubility table when we study chemical reactions. First, let me define two technical terms. Soluble compound or insoluble compound. When we say a soluble compound, we are talking about a compound can be dissolved in a liquid. If we say insoluble compound, it means we are going to talk about a compound cannot be dissolved in a liquid. Most of our study in chemistry is based on water solubility. It means the liquid, for our examples, more than 99% is water. So water is our particular liquid that we are going to study our solubility. So I'm going to see the compound can be dissolved in water or not. If it dissolves, we call that soluble. If it doesn't dissolve, we call that insoluble. They are basic definitions, but we are going to apply them to study chemical reactions. In this slide, you will see NaCl is, sol is soluble in water. So we may write NaCl soluble in water. Whenever we are going to report a soluble compound, we write this notation. Aqueous means water soluble. If the compound we study, it cannot be dissolved in water, we call that insoluble insoluble like this example agcl at this time we write is insoluble we write s s stands on solid it means you can see agcl as a solid form in water let me talk about the solubility in other point of view if you add a compound to water and it dissolves completely in water it's going to be disappeared. So if the compound is disappeared, we call that soluble. If you still see the compound, is still available, visible, and you can see that one, we call that insoluble. So soluble compounds, aqueous, insoluble, solid. Please make sure, don't be confused. S represents solid, it doesn't represent soluble. Soluble means aqueous. Right now, I'm going to work on a couple rules. Always for your exams, for quizzes, you do have solubility tables. So if we are going to study chemical reactions, we supply solubility tables for you guys. But I'm going to ask you, please keep in mind these basic, these two basic rules. It they help you to, when you memorize them, they help you to answer questions quickly and save your time on your exam. What is the rule? Rule, it says, all compounds contain group 1A elements, they are soluble. If we have a formula like this, NaCl, because of Na, Na placed in group number 1, make soluble compound. It means you can easily predict NaCl can be dissolved in water. How about KNO3, potassium nitrate? Potassium nitrate, because of K potassium, group number one, is going to be soluble in water. In other words, if you see any of these elements, group number one element in the compounds, you just need to write for them aqueous, soluble. So it doesn't matter what is the formula, like this one, Li2SO4. So you just need to write aqueous, because in this compound we have lithium. I said group number one elements, so hydrogen group number one. So if you have hydrogen at the beginning of the formula, we call that acid. So 
it means all acids are soluble this rule it is going to be same as the first rule but we are going to focus on acid and say all acids are soluble because hydrogen group number one so if you see hcl h2so4 you just need to write aqs it means they are water soluble so this is a table this is a table you need to learn how to work with this table you need to know how to work with this table it says compounds containing the following ions are generally soluble guys please understand we are going to study chemistry so we do have exceptions so but in general we say group number one elements like lithium sodium potassium or if we have hydrogen and so on they are soluble this is a portion a small portion of a general table so always for the different ions we have the solubility rules so if we have all of these elements you may say they are soluble there is no exceptions ammonium as one of the polyatomic cation it acts like group number one element because it has one positive charge so ammonium always make soluble compounds nitrate and acetate on the second row nitrate and acetate they make soluble compounds for example if i have like mg parenthesis no3 twice magnesium nitrate we don't have a rule for magnesium but we do have a rule for nitrate all nitrate compounds no3 one negative all nitrate compounds are soluble are soluble so you just need to pick them how about the next one i may ask you please take a look at the next row cl1 negative br1 negative and i1 negative in general halogens or we may call them halide they are in general soluble except when these ions we pair with them silver mercury one and lead two the following compounds are insoluble what does that mean assume that i have agcl since i have ag pair with one of these halogens chlorine bromine iodine they are halogen chloride bromide and iodide they are our ion anions silver chloride silver pair with this so we call that insoluble insoluble in solid and we call that s nacl group number one you just need to write aqs or you may say cl are in general we may call them soluble if we have one of these they are insoluble but we don't have ag mercury one and lead two here so we write it aqs let me give it you another example for so4 two negative for sulfate so as you see here we focus on mostly more commonly used ions in chemistry sulfates are soluble except they are paired with these ions so let me write one of these here calcium sulfate it says sulfate are soluble except except when sulfate pairs with calcium the resulting compound is insoluble so calcium sulfate is insoluble and we write s we write s we have some ions they are in general insoluble insoluble so these ions are hydroxide sulfide carbonate phosphate but they are insoluble but whenever we are going to pair them with group one elements group one elements they make soluble compounds so for example naoh please look it says if you have hydroxide oh it means insoluble except is going to pair with group one element 
in A. At that time, we have soluble. We write A case. So there are some examples we are going to work on. So how about this one? CaCO3. Please look. Rule for carbonate. We don't have a rule for group number two elements. We have a rule for carbonate. We look at the carbonate. It says carbonate are insoluble except is going to pair with these, LM, these ions. We make soluble compound. We don't have lithium, sodium, potassium, or ammonium in this compound. So it's insoluble. Insoluble means S. Right now, I may ask you to work on these examples. Potassium hydroxide. Potassium hydroxide. I ask you, please memorize. If we have group number one elements, you just need to write soluble. Soluble. So let me write soluble, but I prefer to write aqueous because I'm going to make sure you have practice enough to write KOH aqueous. So KOH, we write aqueous. It means it can be dissolved in water. AGBR. Guys, please look at the previous slide. Let me erase these ones. Please look. Some of the exceptions for solubility are here. Silver, mercury, lead, barium, mercury, lead, silver, calcium. So most of the time, if we have silver and lead too, Please double check. Double check. It means they are good candidate for insoluble compounds. Our question is AGBR. AGBR. So I'm gonna know what is the rule for this one. BR is halide, halogens. So I'm gonna say halogens are soluble except they pair with AG. At that time we call that insoluble. So I'm gonna write write it. This one here, insoluble. Insoluble means S. Next one, calcium chloride. We don't have a rule for group number two elements, but we do have a rule for halogens, halide. Look here, it says they are soluble except these three. So calcium is not these three. It's not silver, mercury one, and PB2 positive. So that is why we call that soluble aqueous. PBNO3. So PB, it looks we should be careful regarding that. NO3 nitrate. And rule number two, it says all nitrates are soluble, no exceptions. So we write aqueous for this one. How about the next? PBSO4. PBSO4. For this example, we have PB, you should double check everything, and SO4. Look at the say, solubility rule. so 4 compounds are soluble except when we have these ions. We have lead 2, PB2. So we call that resulting compound is insoluble. So we call that insoluble. And we should write solid. Solid. In our a slide several times I call that HG2 to positive. We call that mercury one. Please be careful whenever you are going to work on your examples because two positive divided by two it gives us one positive for each mercury atom. So that is why we call that mercury one. So this is the specific name probably a little bit different by the other ions you learned so far. So HG2, two, two positive, we call that mercury one because this num because we have diatomic molecule forms like this, two positive divided by two, we call that one. So something like this one. I'm gonna help you to understand the meaning of this charge. For each mercury atom, we have one positive charge. All right, guys. You always have this table. 
So you don't need to be worried by I ask you if you memorize or if you keep in mind the group number one elements are making soluble compounds, it helps you to save your time. All acids are soluble as well. How to apply them whenever we have chemical reactions? This is a general chemical reactions. We are going to work on this. PbNO3 twice lead to nitrate. Nitrate means soluble compounds, no exceptions. I write Hs. Plus potassium iodide, because of potassium group 1 element, we write Aqs. Or you may review rule number 3 for halogens. No, there is no difference. So Aqs, Aqs. And on the right side, potassium nitrate, you may review rule for either group 1 element or nitrate. Both make same answer. Aqs. And PbI2. PbI2. If we look at the halogens, again, halogens, if they make a compound with Pb lead to, they are making insoluble compounds. So let me work on this. So it looks during this reaction, we add two solution and we make one solution and one solid. When you make one solid in other video, I already talk about this double displacement reaction when you make a solid. We call that this solid precipitate and the reaction in general we call that precipitation reaction. Precipitation reaction. It means when you add to aqueous solution and you are going to make one solid. This solid is insoluble solid like this example. So if we do this experiment in the lab, this is a very exciting part. You add two solution and you make a solid. And this is the one of the application of solubility rules in chemical reactions. Thank you for watching this video.